Hello class 11th. Welcome to the online tutorial sessions for economics. I am Abhinash Lambert, your economics guru and today we are going to start a new chapter of microeconomics which is demand. From microeconomics chapter number 3 which is demand. Now, what is demand? What is demand? You just want something that doesn't make it a demand for that commodity. If you want something and if you are requiring that thing, you want something that doesn't make it a demand for you. What is demand? Demand of a commodity is the desire. If you want to buy that commodity, which is backed up with sufficient purchasing power. If you desire something, for that you must need your pocket to be filled with that much amount of money so that you can buy it. It doesn't mean you want a cow of rupees 5 lakh and you don't have rupees 5 lakh in your account. So it doesn't make it a demand. So what is demand? Demand of a commodity is the desire. It is a desire. For what? To buy the commodity backed up with sufficient purchasing power. If you have the purchasing power to fulfill your desire and willingness to spend. Suppose you have money and you have a desire but you don't want to spend that money. You want to spend it on somewhere else. So that doesn't make it a demand. What makes it a demand is when you want a thing, when there is some desire, you have enough money to buy that and you want to spend that money. That makes it a demand. So basically, demand means desire plus purchasing power and the willingness to spend. So this is the whole concept of demand. Suppose there is one pen, there is one new pen in the market which is of rupees 10. Now there will be few students will, which will be saying, okay, for rupees 10, I will buy two pen. For some people, it will be like, okay, I will buy five pen. And for one people, for few people, they will be like, I will buy only one pen. Pen is same, price is same, but the people are demanding it differently. There is a different demand by three different students. One is saying, I will buy only two pen. Other one is buying five pen and the third one is buying only one pen. So why this is a difference? These are the demands of three students. Now, why these demands are different? That we are going to study in our today's video. Fine? So, now let's start the new topic which is factors affecting demand. What are the things which determine the demand? Or you can call it determinants of demand. Determinants of demands or factors affecting demand. Both are the same thing. Now the first determinant is price of a commodity. Of course, suppose if there is if there is a commodity which is under your budget, you can easily buy it. You have that money in your pocket. So you can easily buy it. That commodity's demand will be more. Suppose there is a commodity which is very expensive. Will you be able to buy that? No. So its demand will be very low. For example, how price affects Suppose there is a good X of rupees 10. There is a good X of rupees 10. And there is a good Y. There is some other good which is good Y that is of 10 crore. You tell me, you use your brain and tell me which of these goods will have a higher demand? Which of these goods will be demanded more by the people? Of course, good X. Why? Because it's, its price is very low. It's, if something's price is low, its demand will be higher. Therefore, when we talk about this good X and good Y, in that case, the demand, the demand of good X will be more. And in case of good Y, its demand will be less. Why? Because of the price. So we can say that the price of a commodity determines the demand. If the price of a good is less, is less, 
then its demand will be more. If the price of a commodity is more, then its demand will be less. So this type of relationship is termed as inverse relationship. Understood? This has a inverse relationship. That is, if price increases, demand decreases. And if price decreases, demand increases. So I think you all have understood the first factor which affects the demand, which is the price of a commodity. That commodity I have taken as price of good X. Its symbol is P and small x. It determines price of a commodity. Suppose good x, then the x denotes that good and p denotes that price. I hope you have understood. There is an inverse relationship that is if price is more then demand is less and if price is less demand will be more. Now let's come to the second factor which is price of related goods. Now what is related goods? Sir, I don't know. Please guide us. Okay students, it's my pleasure to understand you what is related goods. Now related goods are something which are related. When we talk about related goods, it means there are two goods and which are related to each other in different manner. So there are two types of related goods. First is substitute good, other one is complementary good. First we are going to start with the supplementary good. Price of related goods and its first part which is price of substitute goods. Now, first you have to understand what is substitute good. Substitute goods are those goods which can be used in place of one another for satisfaction of particular want. For satisfaction of a particular want. It means those goods which can be used in place of other. For example, tea and coffee. Suppose you don't have tea, you can buy coffee. Gel pen, ball pen. If you don't have a gel pen, you can write it with a ball pen, right? So, rice and wheat. If you don't have wheat at your home, you can't eat chapatis, you can make some rice. That's it. So, these are your substitute goods, means which can be used in place of other. Fine. So these are the substitute goods. Now let's understand how these substitute goods affects the price. Fine. Now I have taken the example of substitute goods which is Pepsi and Coke. Your favorite. Fine. Now suppose the price of Pepsi is rupees 10 and it's increasing. After 10 it increases to 15. When it reaches to 15, it increases to 20 and again it reaches to 25. Suppose the prices of Pepsi are increasing. First, first it was 10, then 15, then 20, then 25. Now what happens with the Coke? Suppose there are two goods of a similar kind. Both are different, companies are different, but they are of similar kind. And one company is increasing its price. What you will do? You will stop buying that good and you will start buying the other company's good. In this case, if Pepsi is going to increase its price again and again, then it's obvious you are going to buy Coke in place of Pepsi because its price is under your budget. Now, if price of Pepsi is rupees 10, then 1000 bottles of Coke is being purchased. Pepsi increased its price. To rupees 15. Now there will be some effect on the sale of Coke. Because Pepsi has increased its price, people are not able to buy that, then people will shift to the substitute good. They will buy Coke more. Then in that case, the quantity of Coke will increase to suppose 1200 bottles. Fine. Now Pepsi again increased its price. Then again, people will not be able to buy Pepsi anymore and they will shift to the substitute good to satisfy their particular want and again its quantity of coke will increase. This time it will reach to 1800 bottles. Fine. And again similarly Pepsi increases its price to 24 then again people will not be able to buy Pepsi at this price and they will shift to coke because coke's price are at the same level. They are not increasing it. So the quantity of coke will again rise and it will become for example rupees sorry bottles which are 2500 bottles.
so that's how this demand and price works in case of substitute goods fine understood now you have to show that in the curve it's not important but still you can show that in a curve now suppose these are the prices of pepsi these are the prices suppose if this was the price then the quantity of coke was this much when this much was the price of pepsi then this much was the quantity of coke suppose the price increased price increased then the quantity of coke also increased and the same way if again pepsi's price increased the quantity of coke increased so there is a direct relationship between price price and the quantity of the substitute good so you can write it as there is a direct relation there is a direct relation between the price of substitute goods fine direct relation between price of substitute goods and the good so this is your a part which is price of substitute goods now we'll understand price of complementary goods now what are complementary goods students complementary goods are those goods which are used together if you are demanding one thing then it's obvious that you have to demand the other thing also for example bread and butter if you are buying bread then it's obvious that you are going to buy butter also if you are going to buy bricks then you have to buy cement also fine if you are going to buy a car then you have to buy petrol or diesel if you want to buy tea you have to buy sugar so these are the complementary goods so let's understand what is complementary goods complementary goods are those goods which complete the demand for each other and are demanded together fine goods are those goods which complete the demand for each other and are demanded together they both are uh, together they are demanded for example bread butter car petrol tea sugar and pen and ink your examples fine now again let's see how this works suppose i have taken the example of petrol and car suppose the prices of petrol is increasing first it was rupees 100 then it rises to 500 then again to 1000 then 5000 now if the prices of petrol are going to increase then there will be a decline in the purchasing of cars if petrol is going to increase again and again then people are not going to buy the cars so quantity of car when the price of petrol was rupees 100 then the quantity of car which were sold which were demanded was rupees sorry was 5000 at rupees 100 when the price of petrol is 100 people are demanding 5000 cars prices of petrol increased then when prices of petrol increase and people will think the price of petrol is increasing i am not able to uh, buy the petrol on a daily basis at this much price so let's leave the idea of buying a car so in that case few people will drop the idea of buying a car therefore the demand the quantity demanded for the car will decrease when the prices of petrol increase see here the prices of petrol increase therefore the quantity of cars which were people were to buy that decrease again the prices of petrol again it increase and again there is a decrease in the quantity of cars people are not buying the cars because of the increasing price of petrol again the price of petrol rise to 5000 5000 now obviously people are not going to buy it buy the cars why because petrol is very expensive now therefore the quantity of car will again decrease it will be decreasing again and again fine now you have to show that on a graph also suppose there is you can see if prices are increasing then the quantity of car is decreasing when the prices are increasing can see the prices are increasing and due to that demand is decreasing so this type of relationship is known as inverse relationship fine there is a inverse relationship when prices are increasing the demand of the complementary goods are decreasing now you have to show that in a graph also suppose this is your curve because it's inverse relationship 
so the curve will be downward sloping and here there is a direct relationship therefore it will be upward sloping now you can prove that also suppose this was the price of petrol and this was the quantity of cars now there is an increase in the price the price is increased there is an increase now the demand for the quantity of car is going to decrease why because people are no longer able to buy that car because the prices are increasing if prices are increasing we are not able to buy those things fine we have to keep in our budget so this is the graph for the complementary goods and students it's a inverse relation there is a inverse relationship and here in the substitute goods there is a direct relationship now students you have completed the first factor which is price of a commodity you have completed the second which is price of related goods in short you have to write it as pr r means related goods and under it there are two types of goods substitute goods complementary goods there is a definition of substitute good this is the complementary good definition and you have understood the concept here now let's move to the third factor students let's start with the third factor of determining the demand is income income of a person suppose you are having lots of money then you can buy anything but imagine a situation where you have very little amount of money then you will be budgeting you have to cut the extra excessive budget you have to cut the excessive expenditures and you will buy only the important stuff or you will buy the stuff which are cheaper fine so let's start with the third determinant of demand which is income now to understand the income you need to understand what are inferior goods there are basically two type of goods inferior goods and normal goods normal goods are basic goods which you can buy on a daily basis from the market or grocery or shopping mall whatever is there under your budget those are the normal goods there is no particular definition for normal goods these are the goods which you mostly prefer to buy now what are inferior goods inferior goods are the cheaper version of normal goods whatever you buy if you are not able to buy those goods then you buy the cheaper version of those goods which are normal goods so inferior goods are the cheaper version of normal goods basically if a consumer buys a commodity just because of his low income suppose my pocket money was 500 now my pocket money is 100 only my result didn't went well then in that case my dad my mother cut down my pocket money so in that case i won't be lavishing expenses on my stuff no i won't be doing that in that case i will buy those things which are of inferior quality inferior or cheaper version of normal goods so basically if a consumer buys a commodity just because of his low income then it is called inferior good for that person for that person it doesn't matter that if i am buying something that is the inferior good for me that is an inferior good for some other person that might be a normal good fine now let's see the example for example a black and white tv and 4k ultra hd television in that case both are different but for some people this 4k ultra is a normal good and if their income is low they will back to the black and white tv bajra and wheat bajra and wheat for the poor people they eat bajra and when they are rich they eat wheat toned milk and full cream milk most of the richer people rich families prefer full cream milk and the lower income families they prefer toned milk so it is a they just a matter of cheaper version of normal good this is the cheaper version of normal good and this is the normal good for some people this is the normal good there is not a particular definition of normal good but if we buy a cheaper version of our normal good then it will be treated treated as the inferior good for that person i hope you have understood it well now let's mark it in the curves let's draw the curve now for example <clears throat> income and black and white tv quantity income and 4k led tv i have taken the examples of black and white tv and 4k led tv now suppose my income is increased my 
इनकम इज इंक्रीज इनकम इज डिनोटेड बाय वाई इन इकोनॉमिक्स ऑलवेज रिमेंबर इनकम इज डिनोटेड बाय वाई सपोज माय इनकम हैज इंक्रीज माय इनकम हैज इंक्रीज एंड हियर इन बोथ द केसेस माय इनकम हैज इंक्रीज इफ माय इनकम हैज इंक्रीज will i be able to buy a better version of my tv suppose i was having the black and white tv now i have a jackpot i have a lottery i have won 1 crore rupees in that case i will be buying 4k led tv right so if income increases there is a direct relationship fine if the income increases then there is a direct relationship to the normal goods i will be buying more of a normal goods suppose this is the this is my income and i was buying this much amount of tv now if my income increase then there will be increase in the demand of 4k led tv there the income group lies here and the if the income group increases then it will increase the demand it will increase the demand of that tv and here there will be there will be a vice versa in case of inferior good suppose my income increase and i was buying the inferior good then its demand will going to be decrease because i won't be buying that again i don't want to buy that i am rich now i won't be buying any inferior good so in case of inferior goods the demand when income increases then suppose income increase then the demand of those inferior goods they decrease the income increased the demand decreased the quantity decreased and here when income increased the quantity of led tv increased because now i am able to buy normal goods firstly i was buying the inferior goods or you can take it as a vice versa my income increased so the demand of black and white tv decreased now i can buy led tv so as my income increase i will buy the led tv and its demand will increase so in case of inverse inferior goods there is a inverse relationship between income and demand if income increases demand decreases and here in case of normal goods when income increases demand also increases fine so this is your whole thing about income and the determinant of demand now there is one more good which is necessity good it will be asked it will be used in the further topics but you just understand it what is necessity goods now necessity goods basically are the essential goods they are important goods which we use day to day life so because they are essential goods because they are necessity goods its demand do not changes its demand do not changes why because they are essential for example salt you need salt whether your income decreases your income increases your prices of salt increases your prices of salt decreases you are going to buy the salt because it's a necessity for you it's an essential commodity so this is your third determinant of demand which is income now there is one more left the last one let's go to the fourth determinant of demand let's let's move to the last one the last determinant the last important determinant of de determinant of demand which is taste and preference now students let's understand it with an example suppose i called you for party and i give you an option that is the burger and is the apple you can choose only one now i know you Which one you are going to choose? You are obviously you are going to choose burger, apple, chi chi. No, burger. Yes, sir. I love it, burger. Fine. So you will prefer burger instead of an apple. Now suppose the prices of both the things of burger and apple both are same. Both are of rupees ten. Then in that case, whatever you are going to purchase will affect the demand of other. Suppose your taste and preference. you like burger so the taste of burger will be favorable for you so it will be a favorable taste favorable taste and 
the taste of apple that will be unfavorable unfavorable taste understood now if the taste of burger is favorable then obviously in rupees 10 you are going to buy it and thus you are increasing its demand and the unfavorable taste you are not going to buy it because of the unfavorable taste and thus you are going to decrease its demand suppose at the shop the shopkeeper buys burger and apple both in same quantity and your whole class went there and they asked and they had the option of buying burger and apple then most of you are going to buy the burger then obviously its demand is going to increase and apple's demand is going to decrease because of the favorable taste and preference and unfavorable taste and preference now students that's all for this video i hope you have understood a lot and that's it so students stay home stay safe and see you soon and don't forget to have the to take the screenshot take the screenshot and let's wind up this video